Welcome back on the show here for you guys. Looking at more on these games here in week 12. Not previewing anything or anything like that that we did in the previous segment in the, the game picks that we usually do. But we're, we're looking a bit far ahead here for, for this next segment. Um, looking at the Chargers and the Baltimore game. Now this one is set for Monday Night Football, right? So we don't have an official preview. But I wanted to bring it up because I think it is something that has kind of has kind of gauged my interest because of all the talk about the Baltimore Ravens and also the the lack of conversation that I think there has been with the um with the Los Angeles Chargers. I think it's it's not fair, I guess you could say. And what I mean by that is, you know, with this matchup, Jim and John Harbaugh are facing off against each other yet again back on the NFL stage on Monday Night Football. You couldn't have asked for for a better stage for this game, but um, you know, with that being with that being said, you know both of them have their teams virtually with the same record and, and playing equally as good a football, in my opinion. Right, the the Ravens are seven and four, and the Chargers are seven and three. The Chargers actually uh, leapfrog the the Baltimore Ravens after the Chargers won last week against the Bengals, and the Ravens lost last week to the Pittsburgh Steelers. So instead of the Ravens being the fifth seed, now that actually belongs to the Chargers, if you believe it or not. So I think that that enough kind of suggests the kind of season that the Chargers are having. But also, um, I think it just adds to the, the importance of this game, not only because, you know, you have that brother rivalry, right, obviously, but to, to determine seeding, right? We're talking about the fifth and sixth seed who would play the who is it who would play the the Steelers and who would end up playing the the Texans if things stand as they would uh right now also you know how does this impact Denver could they potentially you know sneak up and maybe leapfrog the Ravens if they lose and and then you know you bring up the the fact that we have familiar foes on each side right Greg Roman the the former offensive coordinator for the Ravens now with the Chargers J.K. Dobbins, formerly with the Ravens, now with the Chargers. Same thing for Gus Edwards. Um, you know, there, there's, a, there's a bit of that personal knowledge of, of who you're playing against, right? And, of course, the, the brothers know each other like, um, like the back of their hand, right? So it just adds to the, the interest level, I think, for this game that I, it, I think is very intriguing. And um, it's also, you know, the fact that people still have Baltimore as a top three team in the AFC, while Los Angeles, for the most part, is, is looked upon as, I think, in, you know, the national media, the, the major conversations right right now, I think the Chargers are looked upon as, like, this, this nice story about Jim and taking in, you know, his former team, coaching his former team, coming back into the NFL and how it's all nice and, like, good for them, right? They're, they're having a nice season. They're, I feel like they're not really taken seriously, and... For that to, to be the case right now, um, you know, it feels like they're overachieving where um, people don't really have them in that tier with the Chiefs, obviously, the the Bills or the Ravens even, or even the Steelers, right? I feel like there's a, a bit of a gap there still, despite the record not being far off from, from three out of those four teams, right? And it doesn't really sit too well with me. I, I feel like the Chargers and what Jim Harbaugh's doing and has been doing, I think deserves a bit more credit. And... The result of this game could affect that and people's perception of not only the Chargers, right, bringing more attention to them, but also the Baltimore Ravens, right? Um, starting off with the Chargers, though, first of all, right now, I think the, the Chargers, how they're built and, and what the, the MO is on them is that, right, they're a tough, gritty team based on defense, based on winning at the line of scrimmage, offensive line and defensive line, likewise, running the ball is huge for them, and also limiting turnovers. Justin Herbert only has one interception this entire year, which is nuts. Um, and also, you know, we talked about defense and winning at the line of scrimmage. Their defense overall is first in points allowed, only allowing like like two touchdowns, 14 and a half points per game to the players that they have, right? Because they've had talented players. They've had Derwin James now for a while. They've had uh, Joey Bosa for a while. They've had Khalil Mack for, I believe, his second or third year now with the Chargers as well. And even with that, even having those good players, the defense hasn't really looked like 
like definitely not where they are right now, number one in points uh, points allowed per game. But I think to their own credit, having the talent, but also to the immense credit of of Jesse Minter, if you guys don't know, that's their new defensive coordinator, right? Coming over with Jim Harbaugh from Michigan. Those two guys came over to Los Angeles, and Jesse Minter is doing a great job with that group as well. And looking at how they've played, how they've fared, you know, some people will say that they've benefited off of a pretty easy schedule. And it's hard to argue with that, honestly. But, um, you know, we've seen a lot of teams drop some some gimme games, right? Um, so, you know, I do agree that their schedule definitely hasn't been the hardest. But it hasn't been like a cakewalk either, right? Certainly. And, you know, their best win came last week against the, the Cincinnati Bengals, where we talked about it a little bit and how it was going to be a huge test for this Chargers defense to kind of see where they were, but also with the with the offensive side of the ball, right? How they would fare with, you know, Justin Herbert, obviously a great quarterback, right? You can compare him to Joe Burrow a little bit, right, in, in that regard, but also the, the offense, right? You don't have a Jamar Chase. You don't have a T. Higgins, right, on that side for the Chargers, and it was going to be a big test for them to see if they could put up points and essentially keep up with them, which they did. So I thought they aced that test last week, and their their defense and offense, both of them, I thought played very well. But I think even despite all of that, um, quite fairly, I, I would admit, they're still missing, you know, that real, like, like catalyst, you know, kind of game where they, they prove a lot of people wrong, and it's they're missing a game where you look back on and look and say, you know, they, they beat this team, right? They're still missing that. And I think the the Bengals game could have been that, but the way they're going, you could still make an argument that the Bengals aren't really there. But this game now against the Ravens is is the optimal opportunity for them to get that game under their belt. So that's kind of like what they're bringing to the table, right? To, to try and defeat the Baltimore Ravens as well. And on the Ravens side of things, right? We kind of know their M.O. It's been talked about a lot uh, this season. An insane offense, right? A juggernaut of an offense with Derrick Henry, Lamar. Rashad Bateman's been playing better. Zay Flowers has been playing very well. Uh, Mark Andrews started very slow, but he started to pick it up, and he looks like his old self. Isaiah Likely's contributing as well. I'm sure they, they'd like to get Keaton Mitchell um, I'm sure they'd like to get him more involved as well. He was a big success for them last year. But, you know, we know what their offense is. They're, they're one of the highest scoring ones in the NFL. They have a top run defense. On top of that, a great coach, obviously, right? We don't have to mention John Harbaugh too much. But their their passing defense has been very poor. Their passing defense has been quite awful, if I'm being honest. And they've had good wins too, right? It's not like you can make the argument with the with like the the Chargers right where you know like they play the Raiders they've played the 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 Broncos those are decent wins right I'm sure I'm pretty sure they play the Panthers as well but the the Ravens have have wins against the the Bengals in two great games the Commanders they're considered a good team they beat the brakes off of the Bills right and the Bills are the number two seed right now so it's um they definitely have more to their credentials I would say and after last year too right the number one seed right they have more credentials more to to kind of base their legitimacy off of right I think that's that's where everyone's coming from with the Baltimore Ravens but now we bring up the possibility of the idea that the Chargers maybe could win this game and what happens if they do right how significant is a win for them if they they host the Baltimore Ravens and they somehow defeat this juggernaut offense and put up more points again and and you know Jim Harbaugh I don't think he's beaten his brother in the NFL yet I could be wrong but from what I've seen I don't think he's beaten him yet so that that you know that goes on its own but if the Chargers as a team get a win over the Baltimore Ravens to me I would put them up there with the Pittsburgh Steelers at least but also I think it, it would close the gap certainly, or even the playing field, quite honestly, with the uh, with the Baltimore Ravens, and that's probably not what people want to hear. But uh, I feel like that's the the significance that we're talking about. I think if the Chargers actually beat the the Ravens and, and do a good job and go in there and maybe beat them like I don't know, like like thirty four to to thirty one or something like that, and, and put a point and, and have a decent defensive performance, maybe get a turnover or something like that. 
I think you at least have to put them up there because not only of the record, but directly they just beat them. And if it's a game like that, right, um, and the Chargers don't mess it up for themselves, right, I think you at least have to even the playing field with the Ravens. And I think that's one thing that could happen. Also, if people still had doubts about their defense, if they go out there and play a good game against Lamar and, and limit Derrick Henry, easier said than done, I, I think it ultimately legitimizes them as a top top two or the best defense potentially in the NFL, right? The Steelers will have something to say about that or or the Chiefs or whatnot, right? But that would be a very impressive win all in all if the Chargers are able to do that. Also, um, I think there should be more talk about Justin Herbert. He's done a very good job this year. Maybe the numbers don't jump out at you like, like Joe Burrows, right? With like 27 touchdowns and five interceptions, which is phenomenal. But Justin Herbert has less impressive numbers, but his team is playing better than the Cincinnati Bengals, right? Obviously, he has 13 touchdowns and one interception, and he's sixth in the NFL in quarterback rating right now. So it's not flamboyant. It's not flashy or anything like that, but I feel like the word is efficient that would describe Justin Herbert and this offense, right? It's what Jim Harbaugh wants to see from his team, so I think that fits them perfectly and more people should start talking about Justin Herbert in the kind of year that he's having if he was to win and um, you know outperform uh, Lamar Jackson also and also kind of just like a as a side note the Steelers just defeated the Ravens with a similar sort of blueprint right like a, a top three top five defense a offense that's maybe not so convincing yet but they have good pieces here and there the Steelers and the Chargers are very similar, so maybe the Chargers can take something from that Steelers game and apply it, and in that way, I don't really think it's so impossible for the Chargers to, uh, to, for the Chargers to, to not win this game, but then on the other side, if the Ravens were to lose this game, you know, what would that mean for them, right? Depending on how they lose, in my opinion, I think would be significant, right? If they lose by like, like 10 points or something like that, and their offense drops another dud, um... I think that would be significant, but also just the loss, regardless, just in general, I think would uh would be impactful all in all, right? Because when they lost to the Steelers, right, all I've been hearing is the Steelers didn't score a touchdown. The the Ravens beat themselves, which is true. It, it's true, but I think you're you're discrediting what the Steelers did also. So you know they they lost that game, but still people didn't drop it down because the the Ravens had some mistakes as well, but. If they were to lose this game, I don't think you can contextualize it in, oh, this happened, or oh, they had too many penalties. I think a loss, just in general, would be significant because they would have five losses on the year, and that would already be more than they had last year when they were the um, the number one seed, obviously, right? And it doesn't make too much sense if you bring in Derrick Henry, you were the number one seed last year, and then you drop to the fifth or like sixth seed, right? That doesn't make sense. So that's something... That would have to get talked about, obviously. But um, lastly here, I think it would separate them. It would cr- certainly create a gap for me from them and the, the Buffalo Bills and uh, the Kansas City Chiefs. I, I would have a hard time putting them in that group if they were to lose, right? I think I would group them with the, the Chargers and the, the Steelers, right? More so than the Bills and the Chiefs if they were to lose this game. But um, also lastly, I think if... Lamar doesn't play well, or even if just the the Ravens lose in general, I think that would take a a big hit to his MVP chances as well. I think it would lean more towards uh, Josh Allen, Josh Allen at this point. So, you know, it's it's huge. But also, you know, for for the Ravens to win, I don't want to make it sound like it just wouldn't mean anything. If the Ravens do win and they do it pretty dominantly um, against the Chargers and the, the defense that's allowed the least amount of points so far through the year, I think, you know, that's a great bounce back win to kind of kind of prove themselves again and remind everybody like, no, you know, last week was a fluke. They could try, you know, stop all this talk about them, you know, about using Derrick Henry, not using Derrick Henry. Right. If they go out and win dominantly, they, they have an opportunity to to uh, kind of shut a lot of people up, including myself, probably. So that's kind of what's at stake here for 
the Chargers and the, the Baltimore Ravens. It's a big game that we have to look forward to on Monday night, but we're going to talk about that more once that gets closer. But for right now, we have a couple more segments to get to, one of them being Micah Parsons. He, he said something, again, where he overspoke, I believe. He, he said too much like he did last time. So it was definitely interesting, so I wanted to bring it up on today's show and kind of break it down. Like, like we usually do with the Cowboys. So we're going to talk about that and you know have a conversation about it when we return after this break.